Hello, I'm Pete Martin. If you would like to see more videos in this series or other videos of mandolin, fiddle, improvisation, and other music subjects, subscribe to my channel. Click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. If you like the video, please click like. Players interested in improvisation should check out two series I'm doing. Improv from Scratch is for non-jazz players who want to learn to improvise or who want to improve their improvisation. Jazz players should check out the Barry Harris for Jazz Mandolin series. Find these by going to petemartin.info, click videos, and scroll down. Drones are usually an open string played next to the string that carries the melody. They're used by old time and bluegrass fiddlers especially to make the fiddle kind of larger sounding because you're producing more sound with two notes rather than just one. Let me demonstrate that here. I'm going to play the first seven notes of Mary Had a Little Lamb in the key of D. So if you don't know this, go ahead and learn it. It's D2, D1, D open, D1, D2, three times. Now try playing it, that exact same thing on the D string, while you play the open A string. Notice the A string is droning with the D string, and that sounds real good. Now, just because the string next to it can be droned, it doesn't always mean it'll sound good. Now, let me play the same thing, and you try this at home as well, while I play the same thing on the D string, but now I'll play the open G string with it. To most people's ears, that doesn't sound anywhere near as good. Of course, if it sounds good to your ears, then you may want to try it, but you'll be, uh, uh, your friends may not like it as much as you do. The shuffle bow is a very common pattern used in old time fiddling quite often. It consists of a quarter note followed by two eighth notes. If you don't know what quarter note is and eighth notes are, you don't need to. It's just a, a, a note followed by two notes that are half the length of the original. Let me demonstrate that here. That's what most people will call a shuffle bow. You can easily play that on two strings, and that's what we will do when we learn Fire on the Mountain. Notice the first note is twice as long as the second note. So it's a quarter note followed by two eighth notes. The tune that we're going to learn today, Fire on the Mountain, uses both drones and the shuffle bow. Uh, because both of these are a little bit more demanding on the fiddle player, I'd suggest that beginners do not try this tune. Wait until you can play probably 10 to 15 tunes comfortably before trying this.
So let's learn the first handful of notes in Fire on the Mountain. Just as a quick reminder, we call the index finger on the left hand 1, the middle finger on the left hand 2, the ring finger on the left hand 3, and we would call the pinky 4. We're not going to use it. So if I say put 2 on A, that means put the middle finger on the A string. We're in the key of A, so hopefully you know where the notes of the key of A are on your instrument. Okay, so let's play these notes. A2, A3, open E, one on E, open E, A3, A2, A open. So I want you to pause the video now and memorize these notes. If you find the information in this video useful, I ask that you consider supporting my channel through my Patreon page, which is www.patreon.com slash Pete Martin. For about the price of a cup of coffee, $3 a month, you support the making of videos, instruction articles, transcriptions for fiddle, mandolin, and improvising. Thank you for considering this. Now that you can play those first eight notes of Fire on the Mountain, let's put the bow on the A and E strings and play the same thing. So go ahead here and pause the video and you play that on the A and E string. Notice how when you just played on two strings, when your melody was on the A string, your E string was droning, and when your melody was on the E string, the A string was droning. It's quite a cool effect and it's very common in a lot of fiddle tunes for that to happen. Okay, now let's add the shuffle bow. Remember, a downstroke is, is to your right as you're looking at your own bow, and an upstroke is your bow is moving to the left as you're looking at your own bow. So the first two notes, we're going to play down and up. The next two notes, we're going to slur down. So you'll move the bow down and go open to one on E. Now the next two notes will go up, down, and then the next two notes will slur up. So if we put that together, it sounds like this. So let me do that again. Down, up, slur down, up, down. Slur up. If you want, you could just loop that around a bunch of times. So pause the recording right now and try those eight notes with the bow on the A and E strings and the shuffle rhythm. Notice when I play the shuffle rhythm it sounds way more interesting. So let me play those eight notes without the shuffle rhythm. <laughs> Now let me put that shuffle rhythm into the bow. If I speed this up quite a bit, you'll really hear a difference. First, without the shuffle. Now with the shuffle. Much more interesting with the shuffle. 
Now let's walk through the notes of the rest of the tune. We're going to play two to three down up on the A string. Down on open E. Up on three on E. Down on open. Then slur up one open. Of course we're going to have the bow on both strings and we're going to play the shuffle pattern. Now we repeat a bunch of the notes from the beginning, though not all of them. We repeat this much. Now to get to the end of the A part, we slur up 2 to 1 on A, down on open A, up on 2 on A, slur down 1 to open on A, 1 open, up on 1, down on 2, and up on open. If we have that, now we have the whole A part, which sounds like this. So that is the A part through one time. We're going to repeat it three times so that we have a total of four A parts. My website, PeteMartin.info, has videos, instruction articles, transcriptions, information about mandolin and fiddle lessons, plus 13 instruction books I've written for mandolin, fiddle, and improvising. Be sure to check it out. The B part is very similar, although it's over a string. So I'm on the D string now, and actually we've switched to the key of D here. Uh, so the first handful of notes are very much just, are, are just like the A part, except on the D and A string instead of the A and E string. So down up 2 3 on the D string. <laughs> We slur down open to one on A, up on open A, down on three on D. This is where it gets different. We slur up on the D string two to one, down on open D, up on two on D. Now we slur down on the D string one open, one is up, open is down. 2 is up. I'm sorry, that, I should have said 2 open is up. So if I put the bow on both the D and A strings, which we will for the entire B part, and play what I just described with the slurs, it sounds like this. And then the rest of the B part is identical to the second half of the A part. Once again, we're just one string over. So we're playing on the D and A strings rather than the A and E. But physically, the left hand is doing the identical thing. So here's the whole B part. One time through, we'll repeat it 
one time for a total of two B parts. Now, the, there is one C part, but all the C part is, is the second half of part A, which you will know by now, so it's just this. <laughs> For those of you that like to learn by ear, let me play the A part one time without the drone strings so you can hear the notes. we do the same bowing and just put the bow on the A and E strings the whole time. Now let me play the B part, just the melody strings, but I'll still play the shuffle bowing. all I do is put the bow on the D and A strings that whole time. Now let me play the C part, just the melody string. You should know this already because all it is is the second half of part A. Now I'll play the whole tune slow with the metronome. One, two, three. Have fun with Fire on the Mountain, and best of luck.